Thank you for joining me once again. We are going to be thinking about Jonathan's son, whose name is Mephibosheth, today. The hymn that has been chosen is the hymn, All Things Are Ready. All things are ready, come to the feast, come for the table now is spread. Ye famishing, ye weary, come, and thou shalt be richly fed. Hear the invitation, invitation come hear the invitation, whosoever will, whosoever will praise, praise God, God for full salvation, for full salvation. whosoever will, for whosoever will. Pardon me for that little mix-up there at the end. Uh, appreciate the hymn. Lee, as always, let's look at our passage now. In Mephibosheth, I, I will say this, Mephibosheth, not, not a well-known character, not a, not a character that a lot of folks talk about, but just an abs this is an absolutely lovely passage. And it is hard not to get choked up about it. 2 Samuel 9, verse 1, Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Remember, they had made a covenant with one another to remember each other's descendants, whatever come to pass. And now David is remembering that. And he wants to know if anyone's left. There was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone in the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. And so the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Machir, or however you pronounce that, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then, the, then King David sent and brought him out of the house, brought him out from that place, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. And then David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Here is your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed, bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? The king said to Ziba, Saul's servant, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and all his house. You therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in the harvest and your master's son, that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that the, my lord the king has commanded a servant, so will your servant do. As for Mephibosheth, he shall eat at my table. Um, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Okay. Let's think about the passage, and hopefully you understand why the hymn was chosen. All things are ready. Come to the feast. Mephibosheth was five years old when Jonathan, his father, died. When the news came about that battle and Mephibosheth's father and grandfather's death, Mephibosheth's nursemaid took him up and they tried to, tried to hastily get away. And I believe he fell, if I remember reading it. Uh, it, it talks about it at a certain point. And he became lame in his feet. Time has gone by. We are in Second Samuel chapter 9. Good bit of time has gone by. And you can tell that from some of the things that are said here as it speaks about these things. But just a wonderful picture. Mephibosheth comes and fell on his face and prostrate, pro fell on his face and prostrated himself. 
And David says, Mephibosheth? The cripple man fell on his face. He threw himself down, and I think he had he threw himself down. The cripple man. When we come to the Lord, what are we? Did you hear what Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth said? Just a dead dog. He had actually gone away. He was he was in seclusion, if you will. He was in a far off land in Lodabar. The name Lodabar, what it literally means is no pasture. What sort of land do you think Lodabar was for it to have the name without pasture? Probably not many people lived there, did they? Barren land. A crippled man living in a barren land. Used to be the king's grandson. Jonathan was his father, but they had fled. The kingdom had been given to David, and now David is remembering and says, Is there anyone left? And the crippled man comes from the pastureless land and throws himself down at the feet of the king. He had lost everything. He had lost everything. Not not out of his fault, by the way. Not his fault. But he had lost everything. And now the king says, Come to the feast. The table is spread. You will eat at my table continually like one of my sons. David remembers his friend Jonathan, the one whom he refers to as his brother. And he wants to know if there's anyone left. And here comes Mephibosheth. Just a wonderful, wonderful scene. And we think about coming to the Lord. Coming in the condition that we are in, coming to the feast, knowing that we are absolutely unworthy. And the Lord says, it is prepared. It is prepared for you. And we become children of God. We might think about the applications. As David is showing kindness graciously, to Saul's grandson, Jonathan's son. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.